All right. Well, I think we'll just begin. I, I hope Jillian and Jeffrey join us, but if they don't, well, then that's just our loss and theirs. Okay. So All would right. you please read God's admiration? Yes, I will. God's admiration. God's admiration for us is infinitely greater than anything we can conjure up for him. God's admiration. <laughs> God's admiration for us is infinitely greater than anything we can conjure up for him. Which is, you know, when we consider that this is the testimony of an illumined soul, St. Francis of Assisi, it's really a sweet thought. And what it immediately puts me in mind of is the story of the prodigal child. You know, the prodigal child comes home in humility, dressed in rags, absolutely destitute, and and says, "Can I can I uh, be your servant? Please take me back into your house as your servant." And and the father who has run to him across the desert says, "What are you talking about? Bring the family signet ring." bring the finest robe, bring the sandals, kill the fatted calf. This is how he feels about his child. God's admiration for us is infinitely greater than anything we can conjure up for him. And I love, also love the word conjure. You know, we have our spells and incantations and rituals and all of our magical ways of, of uh, invoking and and admiring the Lord. And, you know, Assisi says, all that is just tiny compared with the infinite admiration that God has for his children. Anything else from anyone? How do you hear this sweet poem? Brother Shankara, this is McKaylee. Yes, McKaylee. Uh it to me it just speaks about god's love and that you know it's just over encompassing and that anything that that we have in here for him on this earth is just a reflection and he yes good yeah. well said yes unconditional unconditional because infinite unconditional infinite you know we have only these negative words to describe the divine infinite meaning not finite uh, and unconditional meaning not conditional what can we say that is you know positive anything else from anyone thank you michaela thank you could we hear the poem one more time? Yes, please, Heidi. God's admiration. God's admiration for us is infinitely greater than anything we can conjure up for him. <laughs> yes, that's the way I feel about it too, uh, Cheryl. It just fills you with the with yeah. the relationship. Yeah. And then, as always, there's this through line. Um, McKaylee, would you like to read this one? Only love honors God. Yes, thank you. Only love honors God. Only love honors God. That sounds as if it could be true. But surely everything he made must be perfect. Only love honors God. Only love honors God. That sounds as if it could be true, but surely everything he made must be perfect. 
<laughs> which is gives you some clue of why he admires it so. <laughs> you know, when we do something beautiful and and close as close to perfect perfection as we can do it, we admire it extravagantly, don't we? And we should. Here is that wonderful gift of creativity manifesting, you know, as as what we did. And so I I love the the ironic twist here. Only love honors God. That sounds as if it could be true. And then he says, but everything must be perfect. So it isn't only love, but everything honors God, which is what Assisi says in so many different ways. Anything else from anyone? Yes, I'd just like to share. Um, I was Zooming, my husband and I were Zooming um, a, a Catholic service. Um, Saturday afternoon, and uh, it's not our church, but um, another church um, that we go to sometimes, and there was a visiting priest there. Um, I don't know who he was, but um, he was giving the homily, the sermon, uh -huh. and um, talking about when he first was becoming a priest, and he thought about leaving, uh, leaving the seminary, and uh, not going through with becoming a priest, and uh, he was uh, in the thing that changed his life is to decide to become a priest. He was, um, I don't know where he was, but he was praying somewhere. And, uh, oh, I know. He was, um, oh, I'm not the best at remembering these details in the story, but he was somewhere in the Holy Land, I'll say, okay? Uh -huh. Giving a sermon last week, and he was in that actual location. And he heard God speaking to him. Oh, and my. And he was talking and he was praying and saying um, of all of these faults of his, of the priest, you know, or the to be priest. And he heard God say to him, thank you for sharing that. You know, and it was, and so what I'm hearing here, like you said, you know, surely everything he made must be perfect. And so the point of this homily that day was that God thanks us for coming to him in prayer. He thanks us for, um, you know, sharing our faults, our failures. You know, he th he's so grateful that we're doing all those things. Yes. And they're not perfect things. They're faults, you know, or shortcomings. Um, I just, I really like that, that homily, how he was laying that out, you know, that, God just, he thanks us for um, our contemplation, our meditation and all that. But he also thanks us for sharing the things where we fall short, you know. And he thanks us even more for doing that than what we can thank him for being in our lives. Yes. Yes. Two things come to mind. First, the idea in the Vedic way of looking at things, that human life is an austerity, that we live for God. We live for the divine and all of the pain and suffering associated with life. The austerity is an offering to God. It's a gift to God. And he thanks us for it, just as you were saying. Now, there was a second thing. Well, it went out of my mind. So that we'll just leave it at that. Um, that uh, this is an austerity, this life, and God thanks us. Oh, I remember the second one. Um, it's, it's the Baal Shem Tov, the great Jewish uh, reformer. Uh, of, I think, the 19th century, 18th or 19th century, the founder of the Hasidim, 
which are very different now than, than what he actually founded. But he said, God, just in very direct response to what you just said, Heidi, he said, God is so grateful. God is so grateful. One of the, his greatest gratitudes is for our simple prayer of thanksgiving for life itself. And so um, he said, the, the, this is the way the peasants pray. The, the peasant or the Russian Jewish peasants of, of the time, he said, this is the way the peasants pray. They just offer this simple prayer of thanks for life itself. And he said, nothing is more pleasing to God's ears. Beautiful. Yeah. If, if if any of you haven't uh, taken a look at the the uh, the what's been left to us by the Baal Shem Tov, B A A L, next word S H E M, next word T O V, means master of the great word or master of the unsayable sacred word. Uh, Mazel Tov is also a, a a, uh, it's, 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 it's related to that. It means, it doesn't just mean congratulations, it means may that unsayable, most sacred word descend into the uttermost depths of your heart. That's what Mazel Tov really means. So these are, again, the testimonies of these great saints. I love the line. That sounds as if it could be true. <laughs> it's, uh, immediately it says, but I'm going to say something else. <laughs> but surely everything he made must be perfect. Well, Heidi, I think you're the only one, uh, only other one that has the book. Okay. We'll, we'll ask you to read, Of Course I Am Jealous. Of course I am jealous. We bless the earth with each step we take. And the firmament, too, needs our touch. Someday your tenderness will reach it. Look how the birds climb some invisible staircase and lay their hands upon him. Of course I am jealous, when I too cannot do that. The sea waited long to sing, not until we leaped out laughing with their birth of us complete. Tell me about your heart, my every word says. Speak to me as if we both lay wounded in a field and are gazing in wonder as our spirits rise. <clears throat> of course I am jealous. We bless the earth with each step we take and the firmament too needs our touch. Someday your tenderness will reach it. Look how the birds climb some invisible staircase and lay their hands upon him. Of course I am jealous when I too cannot do that. The sea waited long to sing. Not until we we leaped our laugh we we leapt out we leaped we leapt out laughing with their birth of us complete. Tell me about your heart, my every word says. Speak to me as if we both lay wounded in a field and are gazing in wonder as our spirits rise. Mm. This is one of his very moving poems. Anyone have anything to say about this one?
uh, Brother Shankara, it's Michele. Yes, Michele. Uh, at, the, at the end, where it says, tell me about your heart. My every word says, speak to me as if we both lay wounded in a field and are gazing in wonder as our spirits rise. Mm -hmm. So I would say that to me kind of signifies death of the body and mm -hmm. the spirit. Well, the, and it's that, it's, that, it's that die before you die. Speak to me as if this is what's happening. And it's that, it's that, he spoke of it in an earlier poem, that dying before you die, that self-effacement, that death of self-effacement. So that's, that's, yes, it, it's the death of the body, but I think more than the death of the actual physical body is the the death of our attachment to it. That's how we rise as the birds rise. Because the invisible staircase that he talks about that the birds climb on are the thermals. I'm sure all of us have seen birds just circling, not flapping their wings at all. They're just circling. They just, and the, the rising air is carrying them up and up and up and up. Hawks are particularly good at this, uh, but other birds do it too, crows, other birds. But, you know, notice the through line of this relationship with the divine and how holy and perfect we are. We bless the earth with each step we take. And the firmament too needs our touch. Someday your tenderness will reach it. What is that someday? When you do what he talks about at the end of the poem, release your attachment to the body, then you will reach your, your tenderness will reach the firmament. Look how the birds climb some invisible staircase and lay their hands upon him. Of course I am jealous when I too cannot do that. The seas waited long to sing. Not until we leaped out laughing was their birth of us complete. And you know, this is, must be a vision he had because that's true, that we were sea creatures before we became human creatures. We were marine mammals before we, because that's what there were, marine mammals. And there were little shrews and other things on them. But, you know, during and after the age of the dinosaurs, you know, the sentient, marine mammals, which are now left to us as dolphins and whales. And, you know, we were that. In the, in, the, in the fins of whales, you can see the fingers. The fingers are there because they came out of the sea, apparently, and then went back. It's astounding. I wondered what he meant by this stanza here. So thank you for explaining what, I mean, explaining, you know, your interpretation of that. Well, that's that's what I hear when I read it, that he had this vision. I just didn't of, know what that meant. Because the, 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 there was no science about this at the time. The science came much later. The seas waited long to sing, not until we leaped out laughing was their birth of us complete. And it, even the leaped out laughing, according to a book, The Aquatic Ape, it was when we were still, you know, half in and how to, half out of the sea, so to speak, when the earth was covered much more by water than it is now. 
uh, and will be again apparently when the when the ice caps melt. Um, but but this is when we developed language so that we could communicate with one another according to this book the aquatic ape which is good science it's peer-reviewed science that this is and you know there's all kinds of evidence that we were once sea creatures if you put a baby in water the baby will not drown the baby will float it will roll over on its back and float it won't breathe the water it won't drown it's only children it's only children who become afraid of the water and flounder in the water that drown in it babies do not drown they float yes i have seen that firsthand many times i've swam swam inside at an indoor pool for oh 30 some years and mm -hmm. uh you know they have lessons for the little ones and mm -hmm. uh six months under six months and mm -hmm. uh it's the adults who are in the pool, you know, doing their thing that are kind of freaking out <laughs> when they see them let go of that infant, you know? Right. Um, and they think it's, I've heard people say, oh, that's so cruel. How can they do that? But No, they, it's not, it's not I cruel at all. The, 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 the child, the baby will simply roll over on its back and float. Not until we leaped out laughing was their birth of us complete. All I can imagine that this was a vision of his. Tell me about your heart. And, and notice that's, that's in quotes. Tell me about your heart. My every word says. Speak to me as if we both. And this is so moving. I. This always brings me right to the edge of tears. Speak to me as if we both lay wounded in a field and are gazing in wonder as our spirits rise. And again, we, if we reflect on the biography of St. Francis of Assisi, he served in two wars as a knight. He knew what it was to lay in a field wounded of his own experience, not only the other soldiers that he was with. Speak to me as if we were both, as if we both lay wounded in a field and are gazing in wonder as our spirits rise. Which says to me that that he had a near-death experience. Anything else from anyone about this spectacularly beautiful poem? I even like that very first sentence. I, I just, we bless the earth with each step we take. Oh, thank you, Heidi. Yes. I mean, that's just really, you know, like I, I, I walk a good bit and um, I'll do even walking meditations at times, you know, mm -hmm. you're, just, you're just there with every step, you know, um, sometimes a busy day when I don't get a chance to sit quiet in my home and do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm just blessed, again, like the little things you said, uh, the divine is more, uh, is really joyful about when we uh give thanks for simple things you yeah. know i just um you know i've had physical problems and i still have physical problems um i have a chronic illness and so every step i take i am just so grateful and i praise the lord for each one of those steps you know um so i feel blessed to be taking those steps um i feel like the earth is blessing me <laughs> you know well um, it's it has to be mutual doesn't it yeah. I mean, there is only one existence. We are part of it. The earth is part of it. So yes, it has to be mutual. And it may be infinitely greater than our expression. Anything else from anyone?
until we leaped out laughing. <laughs> Michaela, would you be so good as to read in all things? Yes. Yes, Brother Shankara. In all things, it was easy to love God in all that was beautiful. The lessons of deeper knowledge, though, instructed me to embrace God in all things. In all things. It was easy to love God in all that was beautiful. The lessons of deeper knowledge, though, instructed me to embrace God in all things. Which is a, just a reflection of, of that earlier poem. Isn't everything the divine made perfect? So he says it was easy in, in the beginning to, uh, to love God and everything that was beautiful. It was only when I gained the wisdom that led to that other poem that everything the divine made is perfect. that he was able to embrace God in all things. And this is something we find in every one of these saints. And, you know, St. Thomas Aquinas, when we get to him, we'll find he really struggled with it. He really struggled because he was so mental. I mean, you talk about somebody that was mental. It was Aquinas. He wrote... He wrote a hundred books in 16 years, a hundred books in 16 years. Just imagine that. I mean, that was obviously his spiritual discipline writing. But as, as great a saint as he became, he struggled with this embracing God in all things. And obviously, St. Francis of Assisi had his moments where he was not able to do that as well. Anything else from anyone? Well, yeah, I'd just say that um, when people agree with you or you're in a relationship with somebody that you align with, it is so much easier than, um, you know, <laughs> to find common ground with somebody, you know, um, that you yes. don't see eye to eye with. Yes. And that's when the real challenge comes in. Yeah. Yes, it certainly is. To know that the divine is in each one of those people or places or things and, um, you know, to embrace God in them and all of that too. So yeah. I, I still, you know, I still struggle with that, but well, this is, this is on the path to sainthood. You know, this is every one of these saints says, gestures one, one way or another to the fact that they struggled with it in themselves. They felt shame about their own in, seeming imperfections until God, you know, St. Teresa of Avila talks about this. You know, she says, I struggled with it you know, being intimate with God because of my own imperfections. And he said, come on, let's dance. <laughs> he insisted. Welcome, Liam. Uh, glad you're with us. Do you have the book? I, unfortunately, I don't have the book with me tonight. Okay. Uh, so we'll need to go back to Heidi to read. Oh, I love this poem. Excuse me, Brother Shankara. Yes, dear. May I say one thing before we read Please the next poem? Please say anything that you like, dear. Thank you. I was parked at a stoplight or a traffic red light today, and I see this dump truck with these huge black 
puffs of smoke going into the sky. And I said, that's God too. (laughs) Good for you, dear. I don't know why that came to me, but so I was thinking about that with this poem, like something so ugly and bad for the earth. But I was like, oh, that's God too. (laughs) Well, you know, this is, this is the thing. (laughs) It's, it's in one way we can say it's bad or inauspicious. And another way we can think this is just part of this great transformation that's going on. You know, as you said, that's God too. That's God being this transformation and what it takes to do the transformation, some of which is not pretty at all. Lord knows it is. It is as St. Francis said, it was easy to embrace God in all the beautiful things, to love God in all the beautiful things. But it's good that you were able to see it that way. Sure, that was, that was a perfect moment. That's God too. This transformative power, you know, in, in Vedic terms, Shiva and his work of transformation destruction and reformation, renewal, uh, as uh, the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, I was told by one of his teachers, who's a dear friend now, Jerry Brunner, uh, he used to be a teacher in Maharishi's organization. He said that the Maharishi spoke of that Shiva aspect of universe as the renewer, the renewer. But there is no renewal without destruction, without it has to be undone before it can be redone. So good on you. Yeah, that is so true. And thank you, Shara. I will remember that as my week goes on <laughs> to look for the good in all those, yeah, in all those things. So, yes, dear. Um, Mother Teresa, she, you know, she did her work on the streets of Calcutta. Yes. She always uh, saw the face of Jesus or the face of Christ in each person. So that really is what helped her to get through it. You know, the first person she picked up had um, worms coming out. They were in the street in the gutter and she pulled them into, I think it was a Shakti, Shakti temple or something. They let her put the person in there to die so that they could die with love and dignity. But she saw Jesus in each person. That's how she instructed her sisters. And then Swami uh, Sarvadivananda, uh, he always says a little story. Maybe you know how to say it better, but it's about he someone has to go find a student has to go find the the ugliest thing on the earth and he couldn't find it mm, no i don't know remember that story. The story i don't know that story of sarvadevanandas no i i oh. don't think i've ever heard it oh. ah well that's a lovely story and speaks exactly to what we're talking about And Mother Teresa, if you read the life of Mother Teresa, you will see how these saints, it's not, it is emphatically not an easy path that they walk. She struggled. She struggled with her heart. She struggled with her mind. She struggled with the world until she was able to see Jesus in the face of everyone she served. And when she says these things, like all of these saints, I think we can simply believe exactly what she says, but she didn't get there overnight by any manner of means. She struggled and she ended up in the hospital herself because of her heart condition. You know, she was, she was tormented by anxiety. You know, these, 
things that resulted to her physical heart because of what she was going through. Beautiful stories of Mother Teresa. Heidi, would you like to read the sacraments? This is one of the sweetest poems in this whole book. I really like this one. The sacraments. I once spoke to my friend, an old squirrel, about the sacraments. He got so excited and ran into a hollow in his tree and came back holding some acorns, an owl feather, and a ribbon he had found. And I just smiled and said, yes, dear, you understand. Everything <laughs> imparts his grace. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> yes. The sacraments. I once spoke to my friend, an old squirrel, about the sacraments. He got so excited and ran into a hollow in his tree and came back holding some acorns an owl feather, and a ribbon he had found. And I just smiled and said, yes, dear, you understand. Everything imparts his grace. Bah. You know, when we take someone like Francis of Assisi seriously, he really did have this conversation with this squirrel. And the squirrel really did that. He didn't make this up. This actually happened. And he really did smile and say, yes, dear, you understand. Everything imparts his grace. Even that black smoke coming from the exhaust pipe of the dump truck. Oh. And you know, the, the poem that uh, the poem before where he says he got jealous of the birds for their ability to ride those thermals. When I read this poem, I just have a twinge of jealousy, you know, and then I have to remind myself, no, 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 you can't compare yourself to these people. You just have to be yourself and let what happens happens. Be, be sincere, you know. Uh, but you have to just think how cool it would be to have that conversation with. Oh, that absolutely! Right? I mean, you can't, just, you yeah. can't avoid that, can you? Heidi? You <laughs> simply can't avoid it. No, who would? Who, oh. would, who wouldn't want to have that? Yes, who wouldn't want that to have that yeah. ability to have this? To have a friend, a friend, a friend. who was an old squirrel, and 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 have this conversation with him. How could you not feel a little? Oh, how lovely yeah. that would be. But each of us is is unique. Each of us will become this infinite being manifested. We're already that infinite being but we'll manifest it fully in our own way and become whatever it is. As, as my teacher Swami Swahananda said to me one time, each of us is called upon to be a Christ. Each one of us is called on to be a Christ. And so, That means that in, in time, that's what will happen. And impatience is just another way of wasting our time. <laughs> that's the voice of experience speaking. So anything else from anyone about this gorgeous little poem? Well, and that squirrel got so excited when they were talking about the sacraments, you know, yes. that he offered up, you know, some of his gifts, an acorn, an owl feather, and a ribbon. Yes.
Yes. And he saw the gifts that they were. He, he treasured them and he kept them because they were the gifts. They were the, they were what imparts the grace. Thank you, Heidi. Anything else from anyone? Okay. Oh, yes. The result of prayer. Michaela, would you be so kind? Yes, Brother Shankara. The result of prayer. The result of prayer is life. Prayer irrigates the earth and heart. The result of prayer. The result of prayer is life. Prayer irrigates the earth and heart. What to say about this poem? It's just so simple and straightforward. If ever there was any encouragement to us to pray, here it is. And one of the things, of course, that is in the great teachings is every thought is a prayer. Or as Hafiz puts it, when we get to Hafiz, we'll come on this to this line. Every thought is an innocent step on the path. The path of what? The path of life. Every thought is an innocent step on the path. In other words, a prayer. Anything else about this one? Michaela, you read it so nicely, so simply and straightforwardly. Mm -hmm. Notice the word irrigates. I don't know if any of you who have ever done, if you ever you've had the ability, the opportunity to do irrigation. I did twice in my life. Once when I lived in Grass Valley, California. Um, the only job I could find was working as an irrigator. And I saw what happened as a result of irrigating those fields. And then later, well, actually it was earlier, uh, when I was in high school, I lived on a six acre farm outside of Riverside, California. It was earlier in my life. And we irrigated the fields there. And one of the things, the, the, when I worked in Grass Valley, that was just a great big, huge open field that I was irrigating. But when we lived at the, on that six acre farm, it was, we had a big half acre vegetable garden. And it was irrigated from this big reservoir that was on the property. And you could see what happened when you planted the seeds and then you irrigated along these long rows, the water would flow, soak in, and you had to be very careful not to overwater, over irrigate so that you just got moist and encouraged the seeds to grow. And then they would grow and it would become tomatoes and corn, beans, and squash, and God only knows what all we grew. So this business of irrigating, it's, it's a powerful word. 
it really does bring life. I mean, I've never done anything on a bigger scale like that, but I have irrigated my garden, my vegetable garden a little bit, and, you know, plants. I mean, I grow some sure. from seed, and it's just quite... Um, it's quite amazing and incredible to watch those little seeds grow yes, yes. into a. I mean, I have two big pots of flowers right now that I did some seed. I started them light, and they're oh, I don't know, maybe you know, ten, twelve inches tall right now, and they haven't flowered yet. But uh, but they will, and they're very healthy. And you know, I just take pride in my little flowers. You know, so um, just on a small scale like that, it's it's pretty cool. Wonderful. Yes, we all have had the, I'm sure, the opportunity of watering small patches. And we do it here. So, Heidi, would you read in a vision? Yes, um, I'd like to say one other thing since we're talking about irrigation and that. Yes. Um, I watched a movie uh, yesterday, and but it, it's on Netflix, and it's about soil. Let me see. I'm looking for the name here quickly. I think it's called The Need to Grow. Mm. The Need to Grow, and it's on Netflix, and mm -hmm. it's about how important our soil is. Mm. And it is about irrigation, but it's about, uh, it, it's, it's a documentary. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would highly recommend it. The Need to Grow. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Yes, the, 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 the monoculture that is practiced by agribusiness is so destructive. So right. destructive. But there, there's a uh, hopeful message with this. You will come out feeling rather hopeful. After Good. To see this Good. Well, you know, that's... there's some destruction and all that in there, but um, but it, I think it, there's a a positive message, hopeful message at the end. So. Well, good, outstanding. Yeah. Thank okay. you for the recommendation. That's the so need awesome. to grow. The need to grow on Netflix. What a what a what a pregnant title. Uh -huh. Okay, I'll read in a vision. I ask for the most intimate experience with the Christ. No one would have believed what happened in a vision more true than this world. The sacred cord pulsated light throughout the universe as I nursed my own Lord at my breasts. In a vision, I asked for the most intimate experience with the Christ. No one would believe what happened in a vision more true than this world. The sacred cord pulsated light throughout the universe as I nursed my own Lord at my breasts. This is the result of actually living Christ's teaching to make the two one. That's where you become both genders in one being. And notice that it's exactly what was said in the Gospels. Ask and ye shall receive. I asked for the most intimate experience with the Christ. No one would believe what happened in a vision more true than this world. The sacred cord 
Amen. That's the sacred chord. Amen. The sacred chord pulsated throughout the universe as I nursed my own Lord at my breasts. Notice that first he had to want that most intimate experience. He had to ask for it. The Lord never will, we're told. The Lord will never force us. Will never compel us. Though the invitation, as we hear from St. Francis and St. Teresa of Avila, the invitation can get pretty compelling. I mean, like, oh, come on, dance with me. Anything else to say about this stunning poem? Liam, this is just an invitation, not, not any way even approaching a request. But you've been quiet. Anything at all to say about this? Well, no, no nothing, nothing in particular. I just kind of wanted to listen in today. Thank you, though. Okay, Liam. I just wanted you to have the opportunity if there was something to say. Well, I'm not surprised that it renders us all kind of quiet. It's a, <laughs> when he says, this is the thing about these saints, when he says it's a vision more true than this world. I think we've all had those experiences that are more intense and more real than what we experience in our everyday waking consciousness. <clears throat> and uh, my teacher, Swami Prabhavananda, said those were visitations, visitations, visitations of the divine presence. Dear God, dear God, please reveal to us your sublime beauty that is everywhere, 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 so that we will never again feel frightened. My divine love, my love, please let us touch your face. Dear God, dear God, please reveal to us your sublime beauty that is everywhere, 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 so that we will never again feel frightened. My divine love, my love, please let us touch your face. What a fitting end to the section on St. Francis. Once again, notice asking, asking, ask, and ye shall receive. So that we will never again feel frightened. And this is what all the great teachers tell us when we 
have the experience of the divine. There's, we see that we lack for nothing and there's nothing to fear. We lack for nothing and there's nothing to fear. So anything? What? Oh, excuse me. Yes, I was just going to say, um, you know, yes, um, ask and you shall receive. And so the fact that that first sentence is saying, dear God, please reveal to us your sublime beauty. That is everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So even though, um, you know, he's asking um, for it to be revealed, clearly it says to me that he has experienced that sublime beauty already, right? Oh, yes, but he's asking well, for all of us. He's asking on all, all of us of us to, to experience that. Reveal uh -huh. to us. That's not the royal we, I don't think he's speaking. Uh -huh. Revealed to us. All of those that he says in an earlier poem that he wants to love and comfort. So this is his love and comfort being expressed for us. You remember one of his earlier poems, he says, I, I, I told God I can't live unless you'll let me comfort everyone that I come in touch with. Anything else before we close? That, that last comment actually did uh, spark a little uh, I, uh, thought for me was, uh, I've been listening to, uh, I think he's related with uh, Ramakrishna uh, Fellowship, uh, Swami uh, Sarva Priyananda. Oh yes, he's yeah. the he's the head of the New York West Side Center. Got it. Yeah, I, I was listening to some uh, talks about the Bhagavad Gita that he had uh, given, and he, he has quite a lot of them. So I can't remember which one exactly, but uh, yeah, I think in one of them he mentioned something about how uh, uh, you know a lot of the work that uh, like uh, Swami V. v uh, Vivekananda. Vivekananda, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I blanked his name. Uh, he did was, you know, for, uh, you know, it wasn't because to help him reach, you know, reach enlightenment because, you know, he, all he had to do was, you know, sit under a tree because he already had it. He, but he, all, a lot of the work that he did was for, you know, for people like us to yes. have the opportunity and have the place to go. And the sentiment of uh, what you just read about what St. Francis uh, said struck me as a very similar uh, ideal as what uh, Vivekananda had uh, yes. for, you know, in, with, with all the work he did. Yes, Vivekananda was once asked by a reporter from the Brooklyn Standard newspaper, Swami, we do not normally think of Hinduism as a proselytizing religion, is an evangelical religion. And the Swami thought about it for a few moments and he said, yes, I have a mission to the West as the Buddha had a mission to the East. And it is, the mission is one just like the Buddha's life was one of self-sacrifice. So was Vivekananda's. He only lived for 39 years. He burnt his body up. I mean, he literally, the, the St. Louis paper of the time, which I can't remember the name of, but this St. Louis paper of the time that he was working throughout the Midwest called him the cyclonic monk. And you're very right, Liam, that's exactly what he was doing is just exactly what's expressed by St. Francis. And he was asking this same thing. Dear God, please reveal to us your sublime beauty so that we will never feel frightened, never again feel frightened. Vivekananda said, I do not want to see you pushed or pulled by anything, least of all fear. So dears, that'll do it for tonight. And next week, We'll take up Rumi.
which <laughs> well, for those of you who haven't had much experience of Rumi, he is one of the most delightful creatures that ever lived on this planet. Just sheerly delightful. So lighthearted, so anyway, we'll find out about him starting next week. Anything else from anyone this evening before we close? All right, dears. Here's the way we say farewell in this congregation. May we be safe. May we be healthy. May we be cheerful. May we have peace of mind. May we go forward in the loving and protective embrace of the divine being as our mother and father. And so with that, to all of you a sweet good night. Uh, for those of you who are so inclined, tomorrow night uh, we'll have a class at the same time where we read and discuss a book about uh, the life of Sri Sharada Devi, called in our tradition, the Holy Mother. And then on Wednesday night, a class at the same time, uh, in which we're reading and discussing a book by one of the great Swamis of the Ramakrishna order, uh, now having left the body. His name was Swami Ranganathananda. And the book we're discussing is a short one only 83 pages long but you talk about action-packed it's called divine grace and in it he makes the case that to be fully human is to be fully divine to fulfill our and this is what francis was gesturing to in so many of these poems we read tonight To be fully human is to be fully divine. So anyway, that's what Tuesday and Wednesday are about. Any other final thoughts from anyone? Just thank you all. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Shankara. Well, dear, you're most welcome. This is, uh, I, I thank you. I thank you all for being here and that we get to do this together. Yes. What a joy. Yes. Shara, so good to see you. Beverly, so good to see uh, your name and your, your being on the screen. So good to know you're getting better and learning to walk again. And uh, Beverly's had a really rough year. Oh man, a rough year. You know, serious health issues. Uh, left her so that she is having to learn how to walk again. Love you much, Beverly. And, uh, Thank you. Love you back. So we'll see you all uh, when we see you next. next. Next week. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, dears. Take care. Good, Good night, everyone. Good night, Good night Liam. Bye. Bye-bye.